I never thought this day would come, but I now almost exclusively illustrate on the iPad Pro. And for that reason, I feel that sharing my list of accessories I use daily is worth sharing with y'all. So let's get into it. Hey y'all, my name is Brad and welcome to my channel, Brave the Woods. I'm a professional illustrator and this channel is a way for me to share everything that I know about digital illustration, from tips, tutorials, reviews, and everything else. But today I wanna to share with you my personal top five accessories list for the iPad Pro that I use daily on my illustration projects. A couple of years ago, I made another accessories episode and I still think that one holds up. There's some awesome products on there. But since then, I've fallen in love with some new products that are both awesome and affordable. But before I go into that list, you're probably gonna to wanna to know which iPad Pro I'm using. This is the fifth generation iPad Pro. It's 12.9 inches. I like to have the bigger tablet if I can. And then I have it at 256 gig of storage. Number one on the list has to be the second generation Apple Pencil. Now over the years, I have bought and tried out so many different types of styluses and this one still is my absolute favorite. For many, many years, I had been using the Wacom pen and honestly, it was okay and it is okay. It's just really light. It feels almost too light and it's kind of got a funky shape to it, which arguably maybe it makes you feel like you can grip it better and there are ways to enhance that experience on the Apple Pencil, but overall, I will say that it is very well balanced. It feels the most natural to draw with and I just really like the weight. It feels really nice in your hand. Now, I know I said that everything on this list was affordable. This is the only exception. It is $129 brand new, which I know is expensive for a stylus, but it is one that you use every single day. The reason why I kind of lumped it in here is because it is a necessity and everything else I promise is affordable. This one just is a little expensive, uh, but well, well worth it. I just lumped it into the cost when I was buying my iPad, so I didn't have to think of it as a super expensive accessory. Next up on the list is the Parblo iPad stand. This stand has been awesome. So as you know, I used to use the Park Slope by 12 South, and that thing's great if you're gonna be having it just stationary on your desk, you're not gonna be lugging it around because it's very heavy, and it was really expensive. The Parblo stand is only $38 on Amazon, which is great. Uh, it's also very lightweight, which I like. It's made out of this plastic, which I was worried about in terms of durability, but I've been using this for the past few months now and it has been sturdy as a rock. I've loved it. Uh, it also has these little grippers on the back so that when you lay it down, it doesn't slide anywhere on your desk, especially on a smooth surface. And adjusting the height on it, the angle that you want is super easy. All you have to do is pull this little tab on the back and then you can just slide that to whatever angle you want, let go and it locks it, and you're good to go. I can leave it on my desk, I can take it in my backpack, it's the perfect stand. For number three, we have the Levitt Touchpad Keyboard Case. It's this guy right here. Now for all my previous iPads, I've always had the Apple Magic Keyboard. I really do love that keyboard. It feels so buttery smooth when you're typing. It doesn't have any Bluetooth, you don't have to charge it. It just connects seamlessly to your iPad. Never have to think about it. I love that. But when I got my new iPad, I found out that the new Apple Magic Keyboard was $300. That seemed way too much for something that I don't use a ton. I really only use my keyboard when I'm traveling and I just have my iPad and I wanna be able to like maybe answer emails or type a few things, nothing crazy. So I didn't feel like I could justify the $300 this time around. So I found this keyboard case on Amazon for only 89 bucks and thought I'd give it a try. Looking at it and holding it, it feels kind of cheap, but it's never broken on me. <laughs> I've never had any issue with it. It looks cheap and it kind of feels cheap, especially in this little joint right here. I always feel like this joint's gonna break. Never had an issue with it and I've had this for, over a year. So it really sounds like I'm dogging on this keyboard case. I'm not. I just wanted to give you a heads up on what you're purchasing. Uh, I didn't expect a ton for the price, uh, but I got a whole lot more than I thought. So opening it up, the keyboard, if you're trying to compare it to the Apple Magic keyboard, it's just not as velvety smooth as that one. Um, it, it, but it is still a comfortable typing experience. And there's a few awesome features in here. It has a touch pad, which makes it feel a whole lot like a laptop. So if you like that experience and not having to tap on your screen and going down to the keyboard, it's really, really nice. And the touchpad works great. Uh, it does connect through Bluetooth, 
uh, which I've not found any lag at all. And it lights up. <laughs> the keys light up so at night you can see what you're typing. And another feature I really like is the fact that you can swivel this bit right here where the screen is and you can move it around and cover the keyboard and now it's just a little tablet still in the case. You don't have to have that keyboard always there and you can flip it back around, kind of like a Microsoft Surface. So just to summarize, it does feel a little cheap, but boy, does it have a lot of amazing features and so far it's been great and durable. I haven't had any issue with the durability, so I can't complain a whole lot and at $89, feels like the price was right. Number four on my list is a matte screen protector by Super Shields. Besides the Apple Pencil, this is the most important thing that you need to draw on your iPad consistently. So what I don't like about the iPad drawing experience is that it feels like you're drawing on glass. When you're doing it, it kind of taps on the screen with your stylus. It doesn't feel very natural. Sometimes it kind of skips over. If your hand gets sweaty at all, it gets all weird. So lots of reasons why I want a matte screen protector on there. Not only just to protect the screen, which is fantastic, that's why I get it, but having that matte finish makes it feel more like you're drawing on paper. It's very smooth and comfortable. Now I can hear you through the screen saying, what about paper-like? I've seen all these ads for paper-like, why don't you just use paper-like? I've actually never used any of the screen protectors from that company, mainly because the price. I just don't understand why they're so expensive. And maybe if they send me one, I'll test it out and uh, maybe it does justify the price. But I have had an amazing experience with these guys for many, many years, and uh, they're only $8 for a three pack. And I maybe go through one a year, two at the most, which means I basically have a screen protector for like the next two, three years. Whereas Paperlite gives you only two for about 40 bucks. So the price just didn't make sense to me. I've never had a bad experience with these Super Shields and I've been using them since I had my iPad. Highly recommend. Okay, so last up we have this protective iPad sleeve by TomTuk, Tom, Tom Talk, TomTuk. I don't know how to say it, but I hope it's TomTuk because that's kind of fun to say. Anyways, it doesn't matter. The sleeve itself really doesn't even matter as long as it's durable, you know, it protects it, it looks cool for you. Um, you can really get any of these. I just wanted to share the one that I had because I particularly like it and uh, it was a good price. It's only $25 on Amazon. And I was really just looking for something that would just, I could throw my iPad in when I left the studio and brought it home or went on vacation. I could kind of tote it around and know that it'd be safe. So this one is water resistant, which is nice if it rains on it. Uh, it does have a nice little zipper pouch here that I really like because I could throw my, my AirPods in there. I can throw other cords or my stylus in there. Um, the inside is nice and protected, super soft. Uh, the corners are reinforced, so they have like a nice little uh, cushy corner there. So if you did drop it, it would be protecting it that way as well. Everything feels really durable and uh, that's all I needed to do. I just needed to protect my iPad. So there's an infinite number of them out there. You can choose which one is best for you. I just like the price and the quality of this one and that's why I got it. But wait, there's more. Now I know this is a top five video, but I did have some honorable mentions that I think you might be interested in. Now, even though they didn't make the top five, I do find these pencil sleeves to be really helpful. Now, earlier I said you might wanna modify your Apple Pencil to make it more comfortable in your hand. Maybe you want it to be thicker, or because it's so smooth, sometimes it gets a little slippery in your hand. Uh, there's a solution for that with different pencil sleeves, and they can be really cheap. The one I use the most is this little silicone one. It's almost more like a skin because it doesn't add a lot of uh, width to it, uh, but it does add enough grip for me that I really, really do like it. And it still works. You know, it magnetizes to charge, and uh, it's just really easy to slip on and off. Uh, I really do like this one. I've had this one for multiple years, and it's only like $6.50 on Amazon. Now, if you're just looking for one that looks really cool, um, but also makes it a little bit thicker, has a different grip to it, it's this Elago uh, Classic Pencil Silicone Sleeve. And it does, it looks just like a pencil. You can get them in lots of different colors. I think they just look awesome. This back end just pops off here and then you can just slide it on and off, but it kind of holds it on there nicely. Now it's a little more expensive than that other one, but it's still fairly cheap. It's only $15 for one of these little sleeves. So to be completely honest, this last one I don't typically use very often. Now I have used it in the past. I just don't care for something on my hand all the time when I'm drawing, and that's the palm rejection glove. Now what is nice about these is if you have an issue with your pinky, it's usually not my palm, it's usually my pinky, that knuckle right there, 
uh, tends to tap on the screen while I'm drawing and it makes unwanted marks. And so that's kind of what this glove does. It does that and it helps your hand glide around easily on the screen. Now for me, I just don't like to have something on my hand all the time, so that's why I don't use it. But I added it on here because I do have one. I do use it sometimes and a lot of artists swear by them. Uh, especially when you're on tablets and you make those unwanted marks, this is just nice to have. So if you wanna just test one out to see if you even like it, just go on Amazon and get one for around like five, six bucks. They don't cost very much. Um, but there are, if you do like it, uh, there are really, really nice ones. I got this one by Inticio. Um, and they have a whole line of really expensive high-end ones with really nice materials and things like that. So if you're into that and you really, really like and want to get some extra quality, you can get those. But uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty easy to find. Well, there you have it. Those are my top five-ish iPad Pro accessories that I use daily as an artist. Hopefully you found this video helpful and now you have some ideas for your own iPad setup as an artist. Each and every one of you probably have different needs, different preferences, budgets, all those things. So please share some of your own favorite accessories in the comments below. I would love to see them and I'm sure everybody else would as well. Well, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.